an iPad. Can I see them? Your iPad, your Bible, on the on this. Because the great man of God is in our midst, and I want everybody to benefit. Today we are going to touch the anointing that is in him. Amen. Before he leaves here, we take everything. He need to go and prepare himself for a trip. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I want to see your Bibles and your tablet. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. You people who are grand soldiers of God. We are fully prepared. It's an opportunity to introduce to you our dear elder and the entire family. Hallelujah. Amen. This shows to me that it's so happy to come to Andrew, uh, to turn out. He came with the whole house. We have our dear brother Emmanuel. And I think we have the little girl, Arena. Arena. And also, I have our baby. I don't know whether it's our baby last or still it's in the arena. <laughs> Hallelujah. God has blessed this church. I'm sure you are going to be blessed with him. Yeah. We have our baby, Crystal Bell. Yeah. As I told you that the whole house is here, we have our dear Mama Dickens, Grace, who is in the better half of our speaker today. And shall we all with clap of friends invite our dear Alda Bank to Today is a very great and wonderful day. It's above all the Lord's Supper. So as my sister sang the song, he said, He paid a debt that I did not owe. And I owe a debt that I could not pay. I needed someone to wash away my sins. Now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. You and I, we had a debt that we couldn't pay. The wonderful thing about this debt is that it's not you who caused it. I didn't cause it. I did not even know how it came about that I had a debt to pay. But the word of God said, my grandfather, great grandfather, great 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 grandfather, what was his name? Who? Adam. He caused the debt. And through all generations, we owe the same debt. And that debt could only be paid by life. It's a life sentence, so we take your life for that. But Jesus said, you know what, God? You are right. You know, God is a God. When he speaks, he can't take back his word. His word remains the same. So you say one thing, I'll go and pay the debt. So Jesus came and died, so that you and I could be free. Let's give Jesus a <laughs> We have prayed already, so I'm not going to pray again. And I know the Spirit is here. Amen. Amen. Any time I stand, I tell God, God, you have given me so many gifts. Sometimes you use me to prophesy. Sometimes you use me to preach. Sometimes to teach. Sometimes to heal the sick. But Lord, today, whatever that you want to use me for, I am ready. Amen. 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 I know before I leave here, somebody is going to be a blessing. Amen. It's going to be you. Amen. Amen. The whole nation, we have been given a theme, hearing and obeying the voice of God in my generation. We know this one. Hearing and obeying. Thank you. Where is it taking you from? 
which book is taken from? Uh -huh. Try, try. Uh -huh. Apostle will never give a theme without giving the quotation. So somebody help me. Hearing. Who was a boy in the Bible who heard the word of God? Who heard God's voice? Samuel. Who? So where is it taken from? Samuel. First or second Samuel? First Samuel. Chapter. Verses. Ah, uh, read the Bible sometimes, yo. First Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Because of time, I'm going to make the story short. Who was the father, uh, sorry, the mother of Samuel? Hannah. Okay, I'm going to make it a teaching so that you can flow with me, okay? I won't preach, but I'll teach. Amen. Amen. Who was the mother of <laughs> Samuel? Hannah. Hannah. Good. Why did Hannah dedicate her son? Imagine you are looking for something, you can't have it. And now you have one, you say, God, take it. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Will you do that? No. Will you? You say, you know, okay, I will do it. Uh, not doing from my heart. Eh? <laughs> but Hannah did it. Hannah dedicated her only son unto God. Because why? She made a vow. Say, God, if you give me one, I'll bring the child back unto you. Right? I paraphrase it. So the Bible says, when the time came, God answered her prayer. May God answer your prayer today. Amen. And Hannah conceived, and he gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. And after the child was weaned, the Bible says he, she went back with her husband to Shiloh and told Eli, Eli, this is the baby that I asked God for. And he gave Samuel back unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't know what you have today to give to God. But anything that you give back unto God, He gives you something that comes back unto you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This woman we call Hannah, she was barren. She couldn't get kids. But when she gave one to God, God gave her more than four or five children, even back more. Isn't that wonderful? Fear the rich turnout. What do you have to give to God? It might not be money, it might not be your children, but this dispensation, God needs your time. Give God your time. If you give God your time, you give you much more things that you need. Who knows the most valuable currency on earth? Is it pounds? Euros? Dollars? Or? Fault. Eh? The most valuable currency on earth is stuff. Take it from me. When you go to UK, you spend your pounds when you are coming living there. If you want to take your pounds to Ghana, you change it to what? Cities. The value is gone. But the same time you take from here to Ghana, the same time you spend, you don't change it. 24 hours, 24 hours. The baby there has the same 24 hours. Me standing here, 24 hours. Elder, 24 hours. And you too, 24 hours. Every single day, God deposits 24 hours in your bank accounts. So use it. You use the whole 24 hours, and the rest that you couldn't use, it's gone. The following day, you give another 24 hours again. But how do you use your time? Amen. Amen. Don't forget, the theme is, Hearing and obeying the voice of God in my generation. Amen. Amen. But the question is, if I don't hear, how can I obey? Someone was in the temple and he heard someone. Read, take your Bible, let's go into first Samuel chapter 3. And as you look into the scriptures, I'll be just going along with it so that you flow with me because of time. He heard God, Samuel. The Bible says he rose up and then he went to Eli and said, Here am I, because you called me. So I didn't call him. The young boy came back again and slept. The voice came again, Samuel. He woke up the second time and went. He said, Master, here I am, you called me. And then he went back and slept, the Bible says. 
But Eli perceived that it was God who was calling him. What I'm saying is in the Bible, I'm not reading mine. I have mine in my head. So you look into yours. But the Bible says, Eli perceived that it was God who was calling him. So he told him, when the voice came again, says what? Sorry? What you're telling me might not be different from what is in your Bible, right? He said, when the voice came again, what should you say? Speak, Lord. That word, Lord, is what I want to hear. Speak, Lord. For your servant is what? Listening. That word Lord means owner. That's why we say landlord, the owner of the house. Lord means owner. The moment you confess Jesus as your Lord, he becomes your owner. You agree with me? Therefore, when your master speaks, you must be able to hear. But what happens if you can't hear your master's voice? Jesus said, I know my sheep. My sheep know me. And when my sheep cry, do you belong to God? Yes. yes we, that means you are not sure. Yes. <laughs> Pia, do you belong to God? Yes. Do you belong to God? Yes. Good. My question is, in how many ways does God speak to us? So many ways. Name one. In our dreams, thank you. Two. Two prophecy. Three. Eh? <laughs> Three the word of God. Uh -huh. By vision and dreams. Okay. Uh -huh. By by revelations. Revelations, dreams, visions, they come all together as well. Uh -huh. Through people. I like it. Through me, like for example. Uh -huh. Only two more that I need to hear. Two more. Only two. By science. By science and thank you. One more. And also through nature. No. God does not speak to you through. He doesn't pray to you. You pray to him. Last one. Last one. It's because of that person, this table has been set. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you don't know this way, it will be hard for you to see that hey, it's God speaking to me. Amen. Most of the times, we have dreams and the next morning we forget it. Some time ago, I was doing some studies and the lecturer said, if you really want to know God speaking to you, take a pen and a paper or a notebook by your side of your bed. When you are going to sleep, say, God, I'm going to sleep. I want to see you tonight. Come and speak to me, Lord. I want to hear. The moment you wake up, take that pen and write whatever that you see in the dreams. I did it. For a week and two. And I tell you what I hear and what I know is too much. So God speaks. And now he still speaks. Amen. But if you don't hear, how can you obey? Hearing is one part and obeying is another. Amen. Amen. I don't know which part you are taking today. But as for me, I'm taking both. I want to hear and I also want to obey. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, the Bible says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Men and female created he them. It's in your Bible. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 27, the Bible said, Then God formed man from the dust of the earth. So here if you don't take it, you might think God created two human beings in the beginning. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, the Bible says, God created man in his own image. But when you read chapter 2 verse 27, the Bible says, he formed man from the dust. What does this mean? The word create in your Bible, Genesis 1 26, in the Hebrew word is bara. Bara means to make something out of nothing. Okay? Genesis chapter 2 verse 27 says, he formed that means he takes something out of something and made it. So you sitting here, you have two parts. Your spirit and your flesh. You get that? The first one said he created man his own image. Okay? Right now in case, for example, my wife is pregnant and you ask me, what are you getting? 
and I say, oh, I'm getting my image. What do you think the time is going to be? A boy, of course. So for me to know what kind of man that God made in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, I must know who God is. Right? Because you cannot put uh, something square at the photocopy machine and when you make a copy, it becomes round. It's not possible. The image is what you have. Let's go to John chapter 4, verse 24. Jesus said, A time has come. And now is that the true worshippers of God must worship God in truth and in spirit because God is what? Thank you. So the image, you know, I'm not looking at the Bible, eh? When you go and do your homework on that. Now, so that means that me standing here, I have God's image. That is his spirit inside of me. So, right now, let me give this one illustration. Imagine you are in the farm or in a forest. And our parents are somewhere else. And then uh, by playing, we drift away from them. And we are lost. And your father shouts. Maybe we are three or five boys around. Kwebwe! One of our schools, Kwebwe, will feel it inside. Yes. Let that When back uh, in the village, we all speak here, right? Yeah. We say, a say, what do you hear the sound. So when your father shouts your name, well, hey, no matter how far you are, yeah. you hear your name, you are only feel something inside. It's true. That's how it is. So if you have God's image, that means God's spirit in you, you become connected with him. You understand? That's why Romans says, the spirit itself bear witness that we are the children of God. So if you don't have God's spirit, the Bible says you are none of his. So, your father can shout quick, quick, but because I'm not quick, I won't feel it. I will hear the word all right, I will hear the sound, but I won't feel the thing. But you be the quick, who among us, hey, can we wait? I think father is calling us. And then you call our attention for us to, work, to go there. So you sitting in here, you have God's image inside of you. You are two in one. You are spirit that nobody can see, the bara or the creator spirit, and this flesh that we see. Amen. So for you to hear God's word, what must you have first? His spirit. His spirit. That spirit is going to be like a mobile phone. Right now, you take your I, uh, iPhone, you dial one, two, three, four, five, six. Before I receive the call, your phone has connected to a mask somewhere for the mask to connect to me. But that connection, you can you see with your eyes? You can't see. That's how God's spirit is. So for God to speak to you, for you to hear, you must have a spirit that you connect with him. Amen. Amen. But back to Samuel's time, the Bible says the Holy Spirit was not living in man like now. We are lucky for Jesus' blood. But when man said our grandfather Adam fell, God's spirit left him. Okay? So that para spirit that God made in Genesis chapter 1, it left Adam. So God said, the day you eat this fruit, you will die. But he ate and he lived for more than hundred years. Somebody said that's why the Bible does not make sense. He doesn't understand. The moment God's spirit leaves you, you become a walking dead. Maybe far from us that you become walking dead. That when the spirit of God continues to dwell in you, you begin to experience God. Amen. Amen. So for you to hear God's word, like I said, stay in tune with his spirit. The moment you let sin comes in your way, then you begin to separate yourself from God. A time will come, you begin to behave like those who have never heard God's word before. Why? Something has come in between your spirit and God's spirit. And God will speak and you will not even hear. Amen. Yeah. All what I'm saying, write the quotations down. So that when you go home, you take time and then you, you go through in John 4, verse 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. So when God's spirit is in you, it identifies you to be God's child. Period. So if I say, Jeff, you see, he, even though he's playing somewhere, I say, Jeff, he will respond to me. Why? Because we share the same spirit. Someone was in the temple sleeping. 
He said, Samuel, but because the spirit was not in him that time, he went to him and said, Any, did you call him? He said, No, no, I didn't call him. Go back. That time, Jesus Christ had not yet come. So the Bible says, when the prophets of those days they prayed, they prophesied, the spirit came upon them. He used them to prophesy and he goes away. But in our dispensation, because of the magnificent blood of Jesus Christ, he prefers us from all unrighteousness. He makes us one with God again. And the Holy Spirit has not come and dwell in us. Amen. So we are lucky. Give Jesus a cup of faith. with God again. We were once alienated from God. But when he says Christ came to die, he brought us back again. So if you are here, you are now back with God again. So maintain God's spirit that is inside you. So that when God speaks, you will hear. Amen. 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 Most of the times, you become so stubborn that your mother will say, sit here. You will not sit. You become so much that your mother or your parents can control you. I quite remember when I was young, I liked footballing. I would like to be in the goal. My mother said, if you go outside and play, by the time you come, there will no food for you. But I'll sneak out and go and be in the goal. I never listened. But one day, I had a football shot in my stomach. So hard, I couldn't stand up. People had to come and wake me up. When I came, my mother said, what did you do? I couldn't even talk. My stomach was pain, so pain. And come and see me. <laughs> Since then, football became my worst enemy. I didn't listen to her oral words, but when I get a shock in my tummy, I begin to hear. We shouldn't wait for God's punishment to come before we begin to hear His voice. We must not begin to know that His Spirit is here within us. Amen. Amen. The second thing I want to ask you is, how can you recognize God's voice? Satan speaks, right? Sometimes you also talk with yourself in your mind. Hmm, this is I'm going to do crown. No, I'm not. You'll be talking with yourself. That yourself is not yourself, but the spirit is you, you that's talking to you. Amen? Uh -huh. And God also speaks. So how can you differentiate between this three? Who can try? Mm -hmm. um, God uh, talks within you just once. He says this once and Satan will repeat itself twice, sometimes three times to tell you that what you are doing is right. Maybe mm -hmm. if you are going to do, maybe I'm going to steal from this guy, mm -hmm. and God will tell me no. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Satan will tell me that I should go. Do it. Mm -hmm. Get the money. Take it. Mm -hmm. So you mean Satan's own is repetition. Yeah. But God doesn't repeat. Yeah, just one. Well tried, but more no that. Thank you. Clap for him. He's right. He's right. He's right. He's right. Can you recognize God's voice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. So when God gives you that spirit, you cannot differentiate. Good. What about if you don't have the same spirit? How would you know that God is speaking? Yes. One best answer. One best one. We got some time. Uh -huh. We can try again. I'm teaching you, so feel free. Uh -huh. Try, try. How can you now you are on the way going somewhere and God is speaking to you? Will you ignore? Yes. But how will you know God is the one speaking? It's a good voice. A good voice. Yeah. So some boys are bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The only way you can know that this voice is God's voice is that it always goes hand in hand with this. That's the only way. That is the only way. Beginning, I said God speaks us in so many ways. If there are eight prominent ways that God speaks to us. The commonest and the easiest is His word. Understand? Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the and the word was read, God. and the word was God. So the more you read the word, you are reading who? God. Amen. Amen. So if God speaks, it always goes in line with His word. God will never say, "Do this." What in His word is there? No. 
is the one who contradicts himself. He is a true and faithful God. So whatever that he has said, he will always do it. When you read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, All scripture is God breath and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good way. The Bible you have in your hands, they are God's spirit. That has been inscribed on a pen and a paper that you and I will read every day. Be honest with yourself. How many of us read the Bible every day? If you read the Bible every day, oh, raise your hands. Every day. Not some days, but every day. God bless you, a few of us. So that means God does not speak to us every day. The Bible says, Satan, your adversary, he stands before God day and night. Accusing you. And you don't have any way to defend yourself. He is speaking against you twice a day, day and night. And you don't do anything about it. No wonder we, all, we are always sick. No wonder we always have problems. No wonder we always have sleepless nights. No wonder we are always fighting and quarrel about things that are not necessary. Because we have abstained ourselves with a long distance between me and God. Then when he speaks, you can't hear. To hear God's voice, you must belong, belong to God, like I said in the beginning. If you don't belong to God, forget about it. Satan will be talking to you. So to belong to God, you must have his spirit. You must have God's DNA. If we take this little girl to the hospital right now and say, we're going to check the paternity test, we take a DNA, it's mine in the night to be found. So when I say, Christabel, she'll respond to me. But when Elder says, Christabel, you will be looking somewhere else. But the DNA does not match. So to hear God's word, you must have God's spirit in you. Hallelujah. Amen. To hear his voice when we, we spend time in the Bible and study in the quiet contemplation time. Early in the morning, even if you test him in this, it's enough. Take your Bible. Holy Spirit, I'm going to read God today. Help me to understand you. And when you begin to read, God will give you a river. The one you are reading, black or white, we call it logos. Logos means written. But when you read, God will give you his own version back. We call it the rhema. So the more rhemas you have in you, the more attentive you come to God's voice. You want to go and marry. The ladies here, I have a question. Maybe you've seen a gentleman that you want to marry. What should be your first question you're asking? Mm -hmm. You talk to me. Me? Yes, you. <laughs> what should be your first question you should ask him? I'll come back to you, man. <laughs> eh? Oh, so... Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> I want a woman, please. Uh -huh. Are you a Christian? Thank you. Are you a Christian? Are you ready? Uh -huh. So, more, more. If you take 100 women, and that shocking me, 98 of them will say, Do you love me? <laughs> I want to be your question to the guy. Imagine you see me. <laughs> <laughs> what question will I ask you? <laughs> sure. Anybody say I'm sure? What then? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. The question that every woman, lady, should ask a man who wants to commit to you is where are we going? Not in love. Where are you going is a question of vision. When God made Adam, he made him first. Spiritually, he made them both at the same time. But when he made the body, he made Adam first. Alright? Then he gave Adam all his commands and instructions. So when the woman came, say, hey, my father God said this, 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 and that. So as a man, you must be able to teach your wife the word of God. So if that gentleman does not know where he's going, God's way, he's not ready yet. Amen. Amen. But so do we. When he speaks, he speaks with God's way at home. When you offend him, say, honey, what you did is not right. For the Bible says that 
He will instruct you according to how things are supposed to be done in the spirit. But as by so doing, your husband becomes God's man peace in the house. But if we cast our mind back home, is that how we sit there in the house? That's why the wives are being crying every day because God's word is not being heard. But in our generation, it's my prayer that we will hear God's voice and then obey it. Amen. Amen. While God will speak audibly to people today, He is being through His word. Sometimes God's leading can come through the Holy Spirit, through our conscience, through circumstances, through exhortation of other people. One pastor that I know, he always, anytime he sees me, he has something for me. And when I go home and I'm reading my Bible, it strikes me what the man said, it comes in. And through the things he tells me, I am now standing here preaching to you. Okay. So God can use people to come and then tell you his way. But the question is, are you ready to obey? Amen. Amen. Now, the second part is, why is obedience so important? He told uh, Saul, the first king of Israel, obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. But my question to be at the reason today is, why is obedience so important to God? Who can give you one reason? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mama Ignis, you have a child. If your child does not obey you, what happens between the two of the relationship? You can't, you can't laugh, you can't flow. So that means disobedience brings about poor relationship. Amen. Amen. Another one, who can try? Mm -hmm. The organist. Why is disobedience not good for you and your parents? Why? Disrespectfulness. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm waiting for your answer. And there's no relationship. Somebody has said that one. Obedience to God preserves and proves our love for Him. First John chapter 5, verse 2. Obedience also demonstrates our faithfulness to Him. God says, Don't steal. You hear, you obey, and you don't do it. It demonstrates that you are faithful to God. Amen. When God's children obey their Heavenly Father, He is glorified. You see, even if my mom tells me, oh, don't, don't do this, don't drink, you know, smoking is very bad for you. I say, Mom, because I love you, I will obey you. My mother feels happy. You understand? The same thing applies to us and God. Like I said in the beginning, God made you in His DNA. You are God's child. No doubt about that. So the moment you begin to obey Him, He is glorified. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Another thing is, when you obey God, He opens avenues for you. He opens chances for you. He opens up opportunities for you. For example, I have three kids in the house. And anytime I speak, Emmanuel, please sit down. He does it. Emmanuel, go to the garage. Man, the show man. She obeys it. Emmanuel, even though it's cold, please go to the car and offload it. He obeys it. And I tell Jeff, Jeff, sit. <laughs> Jeff, it's up to you. Come and stop it. Man, no, and I don't. <laughs> and he begins to be disobedient. Imagine, and I have a biscuit in my hand. Which one would I give? See, how God is, that's how we are. That's why in the beginning I said, He made us in our own image. So the more you are obedient to God, the more He opens up avenues for you. Sometimes I, I, I become to get so crap in things. I say, ah, why is it all of a sudden things are not going well? God, I obey you. You said it's an idea. You said it's an idea, but and all of a sudden things begin to get normal again. But the moment I begin to pray unto Him, He checked my record and said, Ah, this man is obedient. Why not? Here you are. So the more you are obedient to God, the more He opens up avenues for you. That's what we call blessings. Amen. Amen. When we obey God, we can live a life of joy without shame, rooted deeply in the Lord Jesus Christ, and are confident of eternal hope. Because when you obey God, you live life without shame and also stress. For example, you were a student. 
you are about to enter into college. The Bible says that shall not commit fornication. You committed it. This girl is now pregnant. It's your responsibility to stop your schooling and take care of her. Instead of all your mates are studying to become doctors and lawyers, you have to cut your education short and go to the fabric to do 13 hours a day. How long will you live? So when you see your mates in the Mercedes Benz, you are now chasing the tram. All because you disobey the voice of God that says, that shall not fornicate. God's laws are not to restrict you. And not to impede you to make you feel uncomfortable, but for your own protection. Amen. Amen. You know why I don't smoke? You know why I don't drink? I want to preserve my lungs and my destiny intact. Because I want to live long. God forbid that I died 45 years ago old and when I go, oh no, no, God forbid. I will die too early. So I have to preserve what is inside of me. So when God says, don't drink alcohol, I say, yes sir, God, yes sir. I don't need to ask him questions, why not? Take this. Who has a car here? You have a car, right? You have a car? Do you have a car? Yes. Who has a car? Good. What food does your car use? Benzene. Or diesel? Benzene. On the road, five yeah. And the money, what is the car that you do you use? Opel Corsa. When the man who made Opel Corsa was making it, were you there? No, you were not there. But when he went and buy the car, he said, this car only uses benzene. And so, Mr. Opel, you are Kolo. Me, I'm PIWC Android member. I'm a tenor member. I don't listen to you, so I don't know. I love coffee. I will not put coffee in my car. What's the problem? <laughs> that Mr. Opel care about you? No. You will come to go to your work and your car will be in start. And you will be late and your boss will fire you. Is that Mr. Opel's problem? No. But his principle is that use benzene. And you say you like coffee. Success. Yeah. That's how God is. God's principles are principles. Obey them and be free. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm about to finish. Our obedience is actually part of our assurance that we truly know God. So if you say somebody will do something, say, ah, you say you say you were a Christian, but look at what you are doing. If somebody says, don't you feel ashamed? Yeah. You go to a, a, a party and you see a PRWC member uh, wearing a skirt up to here, and no, somebody say, ah, are you are you a Christian? But look at the way you dressed. Does the Bible say you do so? And you, you become cold. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. So whenever you obey God's word, He gives you the freedom to do anything that nobody will even question you about. Amen. Amen. Last but not the least, it brings God's reward. It brings who? God's reward. When someone obey God's way, Hopefully, and Philippians, who were the sons of Eli, who were disobeying God, the Bible say they died at the battlefield. They perished. But Samuel grew very old. He was respected. Everybody revered him. The same thing applies to you today. If you be attentive to God's way that you read every day, people will respect you. When they are coming to you, they are coming to speak to you in dignity and in respect. I'm not sure nobody will step out to Allah and say, hey, I mean, I hope I mean, my vision will be on my No, you won't do that. You respect the man of God. Why? Because he obeys God's way. Amen. Amen. As I bring the message to an end, today is the Lord's Supper. He says, say something. In John, take the Bible with me this time. John chapter 6, verses 53. John 6, 53. Who is there can read with me, please? John 6, 53. John chapter 6, verse 53. Jesus said to them, Slowly, I, don't rush. Jesus mm -hmm. said to them, mm -hmm. I tell you the truth, mm -hmm. unless you can eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, Surely, surely, I say unto you today, be at the turn out. Unless you eat the flesh 
and drink of the blood, you have no what? Life in you. Um, but I will not eat, I will not die. After all, I will go to my school tomorrow. That's what the physical is talking about. He's talking about your spiritual death. So now, if you obey God's way, you will die with him as he has said. The life you are going to have is that you've got to have your spirit having contact with him. Okay? Right now, if I get outside there, I take a brown leaf. And I take from the tree a green leaf. Are they equal or they are not equal? Why are they not equal? The brown one is there and the green one is found. Give all of two, all of the two, two hours. The green one will be brown. Why? Because it has detached itself from the tree, from the source. And the two of them will die. They are dead. So that's why this is saying. So I'm like yourself. Thank you, madam. <laughs> so that's what he says is saying. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have life. That means you, you touch yourself with the tree. But if you disobey me, you don't die with me. There's no life. You become like the green tree and uh, the green leaf that has been plucked off the tree. In a matter of time, it will die. So today we thank God so much for what He has said before us. Because it's, it's not everybody who has a chance to die with God. I remember back in Genesis, the Bible says, when they have taken the fruit and they ate it, the eyes were what? Open. Phew! Oh, you are naked. And it didn't happen. So all along I was looking at the day, see, oh, they are naked. What happened? They ate the fruit and they were naked. While Arthur was leading us in prayer, he quoted from Luke. Chapter 4. When he says die with them, their eyes do what? He said in the film between the eye open in Genesis chapter 3 and the eye open in Luke chapter 4. Luke 24. Is there any difference? After all, eye the eye. But listen, when he says opens your eye, your heart becomes with joyful. When the devil opened the eyes of our grandfather and grandmother in the Garden of Eden, they became rebellious and they ran away from God. But when he says open your eyes, you will run to God. Today is my prayer that as we time with the Lord, our eyes will open. Amen. We will not run away from God as Adam and Eve did, but we will run towards God and embrace Him. May the peace of God, that transcends all understanding, be with your hearts and minds in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.